got five in the door Ooh. and the jack peeks in the window. Well, like myself and like everyone at home, we all saw the five first of all. No, no, you're good. And then good. the think, yeah. dagger through the heart. Talk about I jumping through hoops. Reason. Set over set. <laughs> the odds, Roy? Huge. If it's 16 to 1, 16 to 1. Time's plenty, Jesse. <laughs> Don't confuse me. The set Just of jacks the five is going on the river, to be good. Then. Unless. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Nice hand. Nice hand. Oh, Shelly Rubenstein, right back in this tournament now. the first one, not that one. Shelly was starting <laughs> to think this wasn't her day, Roy, and now four jacks yeah. saying maybe she's a wild card. Look at that hand again. Bronwyn Campbell. The five was the first card in the door, but the jack, the jack, the armies all came in. And uh, four of a kind for Shelley Rubenstein. An emphatic return for the poker goth here, Roy. Well, what a hand. Shelley Rubenstein's four jacks trumping Bronwyn Campbell's full house. I think it's going to be pretty difficult to better that hand all tournament. Stay where you are, though. Lots more drama still to come on this European Ladies' Championship. Welcome back to the Labbrooks Poker.com European Ladies Championship. We've already seen a couple of departures from the feature table, but all around the tournament, players are dropping like flies. I don't like calling the Lace King, but I decide that I think I have to. And to be honest, I'm hoping I'm against Queen. <laughs> and I'm not, she's got aces. <laughs> and I don't get any help. Well, it just got short stacked and had to make a move. Yes, 10 said it. And, um... Just 2,600 chips, so I had a move. And uh, got called by Ace King, and that was it. The Ace King held up. Um, I was low stacked, so I pushed. I had Ace King, and I got called by Pocket Queens. Didn't catch a thing, unfortunately. But I played really well all day. I was happy with my play. I didn't make big mistakes. I had a lot of big folds, had a lot of good calls, but just wickled away on one hand, and I ended up pushing, and then I picked up the Ace King. That's kind of shocked the table. Four jacks, and now, very next hand. I'm having difficult decisions. Shelly Rubenstein is sort of towering above this table. I think her head has raised about four inches in the last six hands. Us. Boosted her chair up a little bit. Us. And she may give Liv Bowie a little trouble. Liv, very aggressive from the button with the raises. Call. Time for Liv to slow down. Yeah, just to call. Mixing it up somewhat. Call. Option. Check. King seven plays well against the queen seven. Three plus. And the queen seven plays good against the queen six. It's a triumvirate here of domination. It's a flush draw for her. I was about to say, I don't think she's going to have an ace in this coup, but... Hey, Without having an ace, that's the next best thing. This is a spot cool. to raise in now. Cool. I mean, you give Shelly some chips, and immediately she tries that's to dust them off. Is this bluff going to work, Roy? Does she have the second bullet? Beast Mother really should have raised there with this draw. <laughs> Will Shelly shut it down? Two players with a straight draw. One needs a six, one needs a seven. That's 1,200. Well, it's an odd size. What does it mean to you? Cool. Cool. And at this stage, if you're Shelly Roy, can you put her on the flush draw, or are you convinced you're up against an ace? Uh, Shelly's only just got some chips, and now she's found a lot of them in the middle of the table. And she is not going to see them again. She's fired once, she's fired twice. <laughs> She'll have to recognize that as a bad card, Roy. It had to be one or the other, didn't it? Check. Small bet from Lisa Muller here would get a prospect of being raised. Because it's not going to be called. We know that. I tell you what, for Lisa Muller, I mean, well, obviously she's done very well to make the flush, but she ain't even getting paid a little bit. She's obviously trying to get paid by an ace. And the game. Chips are moving around this table. 
They are indeed. Just a bit of a lack of uh, aggression there, really, these flush draws. There's not a spot to be calling down with. There are, there are spots you're making the move with in this game. No. But the net result was she got the card she was chasing and she won all the more. Chips on the table. Most of them belong to Liv Bury. But how about Lee Smaller? She's been on the move. 29 players remain in this tournament, so the average is still not yet 10,000. So who needs to worry? Well, pretty much no one looking at that. 4,800, Tina Ainsworth. If she gets them in and doubles through, she's got more than an average stack. So, yeah, Liv Borry, foot on the gas. She's the one that can afford to bully because her opponents aren't yet at the stage where they've got nothing to lose. Beverly Pace in the background there, still in, as is Carsucci. Us. This tournament, though, consolidation. There is Seabass. Action on this hand. Roy has moved around. I think it's just in front of Duffy, perhaps. She's gotten very uh, quiet. I'm going to pass it, though. Race. There you go. Race. Oh, you just get the feeling that sooner or later, uh, Louise is planning to come over the top of Lise. This could be the time. <laughs> is there a bit of a tell here <laughs> with Louise Duffy when she stops talking? Yeah, exactly. Let's say she, she, she's a chatterbox until she picks up, you know, or, or, or suddenly she, she's got an idea she wants to do something. She's got 5,800, Roy. She might just ship them. What kind of hand does she put Louise on? Late position. Oh. Have a look at the flop, she says. Oh. This is dangerous, isn't it? Yeah, cool. it always is with these middle pairs, you know. What Check kind of flop do you want to see when your opponent comes out betting and you're looking at a 10 and a jack? And Louise has gotten very stern here. This is a horrible flop for the sevens. What sort of bet size should Muller make considering what Duffy's got left? Louise Duffy checks us here for one of our sevens is a heart. It's 2,000. I mean, if Duffy wanted to look at the flop, she couldn't have found anything she liked the look of less. The overcards, the triple suits. Not, She's done, cool, isn't she? It? It's an all-in or a fold. Those words come in with effort. Uh, and we all know it's going to be a fold. No, I'm just, no hearts. I'm behind. Yes, you are behind. Wow, Lee Smuller. He was asked to show and... Yeah, I thought you were an ace-king or anything like that, or anything with heart, ace of hearts, but I think, you know, it wasn't a great flop for me. What's the dynamic on this table? Are people kind of getting the feeling that Louise Duffy is looking to move her chips? She's gone quiet again. I don't have enough to raise the move pole. Couple oh, greens, couple oh, reds, couple oh, yellows, oh, sling them in. Louise says it ain't much, but it's more than Liza wants to pay with the ducks. Yeah, of course. Us. That is going to be enough to call this all in a 4,200 chips by Louise Duffy. She's got two players behind her, Terry Roy. Is well, that she, a she, reason she to might, re -roof? Yeah, she might well re-raise herself then. Got to isolate the pot in these situations. Yeah, of course. Good. One of the... There's a lot turned on this table. And I mean, should Jackie Terry be moving all in to isolate, or should she perhaps? Uh, it's a very hard decision. Yeah. So you respect your rights. I would have wanted to know about hands. Yeah. That's been a question. I think she thinks she might be up against a pair. A bit of catchy chit chat there, I believe. You know, I think Jackie Terry's capable of folding this ace king before the flop, Roy. She's got no. nothing invested. No, absolutely not. Wow, what is going on? It's okay, I'll take that back. She's capable of passing it's the ace only no pair. And Catherine Hartree on the exit. Roy, runner-up in this event two years ago. And uh, she's following Jackie Meacham. Yeah. A lot of rookies yeah. in this I event still, though. Captain Archery, I don't suspect she would have passed an ace king in that situation no, there. Uh, it was a bizarre yeah, pass yeah, by Jack yeah. Terry, but Louise Duffy. I, with a, with a hand like that, I can't some raise some 2,000 and let you in with ace king, miss my flop. I just had a really, really bad run. I got no cards, put in a couple of bluffs, ran into hands, so I went weak early. Um, 
and ended up having to shove all in with five high and it being recorded. <laughs> cool. Picture perfect Plus. on the outside and on the inside. Plus. Ladies' Championship still 30 odd in this tournament, Roy. St Paul's Cathedral because we are here in cool. the centre of London on the banks of the River Thames where 52 ladies have become Plus. 27 already. Well, Eliza Burnett has limped in under the gun, and that's brought Bronwyn Campbell on the cheap Someone charge. Riz, but 1600s. <laughs> Shelly Rubenstein, she's just a bully. Anybody shows weakness, and Shelly is on top of it. She doesn't have to have cards here, Roy. Cool. All she's got is money. Uh, she's been called. Well, I feel like that hand is way ahead of Shelly's range. Oh, two tens. Oh, that's a real hand. Two players. Campbell gone down, and this all flop dependent. If Eliza misses, this is Shelly's pot. Diamonds are a girl's best friend. Yeah, check. There was that. Yeah, and this is a, this is a check by Eliza Burnett. She will move all in when Shelly bets. Shelly might just want to go all in here. There's a lot of money in this pot. Yeah, no. Here it goes. It's two and a half thousand. Shelly bets. Liza now. Eliza now moves all in. Yeah, I mean, the problem for Shelly Rubenstein here is she's. That's what I've got there. She's given Shelly a chance to commit herself. Yeah, I understand that. Shelly's given Liza a chance to get the chips in first, Roy. She's definitely going all in. Well, it's a 15 card draw. There's three aces, three jacks, and nine diamonds. It's the only play for Liza, isn't it? Of course it is, and surely this is what she's deliberately done. There's one less diamond really because Shelly has one in her hand. There you go, mathematically she's favorite. Do you really want to yes. do all that on a draw? <laughs> <laughs> Don't even know you're yet. Pity chips, yeah. I'd be honored to be knocked out by you. Hmm? I'd be honored to be knocked out by you. Pity chips. Really? It would be <laughs> foolish on a draw. You know I'm made. I'll do a record. <laughs> you got a hit. And a straight flush draw. Over cards and a straight flush draw. Have you? Yeah. Well, Eliza's basically told Shelly what she has. <laughs> Which is never a good idea in a game of poker. Shelly's trying to talk her off it. You always draw. Well, if you want to draw and, and. You're behind, you know you're behind. Know. It would be foolish for you to gamble that much when you really need to hit, and I don't. I wonder when the DVD and book's coming out, Jesse. She, she is trying to talk her off this, Roy. She's passed it! Woeful. Blah, 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 Woeful. This is a woman who did not want to call, though. From an experienced player like Liza yeah. now, I am so disappointed. Why on earth didn't she come out betting or check to make the all-in? But pass up. Why, why pay the ace jack of diamonds to get that kind of flop to pass? She could sell a Ferrari to Enzo, Shelley Rubenstein. And, uh, Roy, she talked that one straight into the Campbell. 9,000. Poker got got now, risk-free. The moves we've seen on this table, downward trend at the end, Ainsworth and Bronwyn Campbell. Shelly Rubenstein has garnered, oh, tons of chips, and Pass. Liv has not grabbed many extra since she sat down. Poker goth, black fingernails and pink chips. 18. Raised to 18. Pass. This is really Shelly's game, isn't it? Just a rat tat tat. Well, what are you supposed to do with that kind of pair in this game? Pass. Clear us all in. And this is what exactly Pass. what Liza Burnett was waiting for. A spot to take on. Poker Goth. Bronwyn's had no love since she came to the TV table, Roy. Is this another good fold? I think she was planning on making the only move herself, and Liza Burnett has got in her way. Now she's going to have to accept it. Our East Queen is not good. Like the luge for the Glaswegian. Is it 5 3? 5 8. No, it's 4 8, sorry. I mean, Shelly Rubenstein, obviously, if she knew she was up against the big slick, she wouldn't mind the gamble, but <sighs> she knows Liza Burnett's pretty tight. 3,000 chips back Can I? on her. Do you want the call or not? Warden. Pardon? Not Warden. 
You're giving me a false signal there. Uh, 3,000 more if you want to. 2,000 more? 3,000 more. 3,000. That's a lot. I'll do it. Uh, she's in fantastic shape as well because we've seen an ace passed. And that's one less card. Okay, call it was a gutsy yeah. call by Shelley. It's over half her stack, Roy, but it's the right call, isn't it? It is indeed. Ace, and please, those percentages say she's 52%. It's bigger than that. Jack 2 5. Safe flop for the pocket pair. Liza Burnett on the cloth. Okay, can we have a turn? <coughs> oh my! And it's over! One and we well. have a river. All the snowmen cold right now for Liza Burnett. It was the same two customers, Eliza Burnett and Shelley Rubenstein. They clashed before, I think. Eliza Burnett will go home ruining the fact she did not do more with her ace jack of diamonds. Eliza's last hand, Roy. It was the straight race, but how it came about, the gutsy call of Burnett's all in by the poker goth. Yeah, I like the play from both players. It was a brave call of the all-in, but the ace-king did what it needed to do, and you could say it's a coin flip, but with an ace already passed, that, of course, of Bronwyn Campbell, who would have actually hit the queen on the end, but it would have been futile. Uh, Rubenstein was a bigger so favour than ever, anyway. and she now has it's a lot so of chips, 14,700, like and dare I say it, she's earned them. I got quite short-stacked. I was down to about 6,000. I think the average was 10. Um, I'd lost a, quite a big pot a few hands before. I find ace-king... Um, Shelly raises. I re raise all in, so, so, hoping she will fold. Um, she didn't, she had a pair of eights, and nothing came on the board. So Eliza Burnett is out, and she leaves with nothing. It's time for us to leave you as well. But do join us again next time when we'll get another step closer towards our final table and discovering who will be crowned 2008 LabrooksPoker.com European Ladies Champion. We'll see you then, but from all of us, it's bye for now. think that more women uh, should play poker. I, I think a lot of ladies are, are put off by going in such a male dominated environment that they don't enjoy it. Um, so I, I'm actually all, all in favour of all ladies tournaments if that, if, that's, if that will help some ladies get a bit of confidence. There's a, like a stigma against poker. Everybody thinks like you're going to lose your house and it's not. It's just like going and playing bingo on a Saturday night. You know, you're paying your five pound steak and you're getting your chips. I found the jump from playing from with friends to with strangers really intimidating, and uh, I was really nervous actually at the beginning. Um, which yeah, I was I was aware of people looking at my hands shaking when I was moving my chips around and stuff, and feeling like I'm such an amateur. Uh, but it was so exciting, I loved it. And then once you warmed up, it was like just wanting to keep going and going and going. The percentage of female poker players has grown dramatically over the last few years, and more and more women are taking part in big tournaments and walking away with the big prize money, as well as gaining respect from their fellow male poker players. You just have to look at Annette Oberstar. She won one a million pounds in 2007 in a mixed tournament? Uh, I got into it like four or five years ago. Um, I used to play a lot of bowling, uh, like 10 pin bowling as a sport. Um, and I was watching TV one day and I saw this uh, bowling program and it had like a commercial in the background, like a banner for a poker site. So I went online and I checked it out and I thought it was kind of fun. And just continue that way. And actually, I saw my husband playing online and I kept thinking, what is he doing, what's he doing? And having a look and thinking, oh, I'm walking away from the computer and then coming back and having a little look and thinking, oh, what's this, what's this? Well, ever since I was a kid, I could play poker, but I've only started playing Texas and Sold in about four years. But um, I'm the second youngest to 10 in Ireland and there was no television, so it was a card deck on the table and that was it. My brother taught me how to play when I was about seven years old and an obsession was born and it's never left me. 
to be honest, my seven-year-old son loves playing it, and I used to play it against him, whether that's a good thing to say or not. But he, he loves to play poker, and the teacher said it's really good for his maths and things like that, working all out. I think when I learned how to play, I just I, I fell in love with the game instantly. And then, obviously, when you start to play and you start to win, you get the, the feel for it, and you want to play more and more and more. So that's how I got into it. <laughs> European Ladies Championship. Um, good to see a mixture of uh, new and old faces. In terms of the players we're here, we've got uh, our defending champion, Chucky, where are you? Yeah. Hi. Um, we have quite a field uh, compiled this year. Um, from our side, Beverly, where are you? We have the Women's World Open Champion. Uh, first uh, Labrix chocolate chip set, <laughs> which can be very dangerous to your health if not handled correctly. <laughs> Well, first of all, when I first started to play, somebody told me to get poker for dummies. And I got poker for dummies, and I read that. And then I went online, and I started playing in the free games. And I just played sort of the free games, and then sort of went on to the pound sit-and-goes, you know, and the pound tournaments, and, and just went on from there. Online's fantastic now. It takes away the nerve element completely. Um, you, you don't get treated at the table like you're a woman because the players obviously don't know. You can learn for free online so you can get the practice and learn to be relaxed at the table before you make the step to live. I'd say that playing online does definitely build your confidence up with the game but it is very, it is different. So if you can get into some tournaments, you know, it, that I'd really recommend that because it's a fantastic experience and you learn so much from, from, from really being right there and playing against, you know, other players that are more experienced than you. All of it, everything counts, but live, there's nothing beats live play. Once you feel the chips in your hand, touch the cards, learn how to bet, watch people at the table, it's, that's the game. I think if you're a beginner at poker, um, don't go too mad. Start off by just playing your cards, trying to get a feel for the table. Um, you know, if you're going to make moves... Um, you probably need a little bit more experience to do that. Um, I think the best way to learn as a beginner is a combination of online, just to you know play as many hands, and everyone always says play loads of hands online, and then uh, and then a few live you know well, home games with friends, just to sort of teach you the etiquette and stuff. I think the best is you have to get your own experience, and you get only experience when you play by yourself. Combination of everything. Experience, experience, experience. You can learn the rules in a day or in an hour. It, it's a lifetime of experience. I'm learning every day, but I think read as many books as you can, read as many magazines, watch as much, and just play, play, play. I think anyone can pick this game up, you know, and advance on it. It's all about practice. Um, there is an awful lot of luck involved in it, but I, I still think there's a lot of skill. Um, there's a lot of women in there playing really, really good poker, but there's just as many playing really bad poker in there. Try and form an imaginary screen around yourself and not let people wind you up or not let hands bother you. If you play a hand and you, and you lose, just take a minute, breathe, and then clear your mind and go on to the next hand. That's, I think, the most important thing. Do you know what? Put them off. Smile, um, pout... Just kind of off. I, I was really unnerving my lot today, and um, I won a few major hands on my table. Not the televised, unfortunately, it wasn't so good. But um, yeah, I just think kind of just be kind of a bit different, and you can put them off a little bit. That's what worked for me. Go with your instinct. Just go with your gut feeling. Any two cards can hold up. 
Some of the best advice I was given early on, it's a really easy game to learn, very difficult one to master, and is to play a game in a particular style. It gives you so much information. If you say to yourself, okay, in this game, I'm only allowed to raise or fold. You learn so much by playing a whole game, whole sit and go tournament online. Just raise, excuse me, or just fold.